Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the melons, we're gonna be looking at the cucumbers because this whole family, I really need to keep a close eye on. In fact, I've already lost some plants. I've already lost a cucumber here on this pole, another cucumber back there, even some melon plants to something called Fusarium wilt. And Fusarium wilt is really highly affected by these two plants in particular, the melon and the cucumber. Um, and they're also some of my more favorite fruits to grow here in the garden as annuals. So I'm really trying hard to keep a close eye on it. And I've learned a couple things this year and I wanna share what I've learned with you guys so far. So definitely without a doubt, this climate is very difficult to grow these particular things in. We just are very humid here. Um, there's a lot of rain. And if we don't have enough airflow, we're not growing these things vertically it can be quite a challenge. Um, so I think growing them vertically as single stem plants really helps out quite a bit. Also positioning them in the garden in an area that is getting a nice little southern exposure, also getting some morning sun because that morning sun, if it rains at night, is gonna help dry these leaves very quickly. Now, Fusarium wilt could also be at the soil level. So if it's in your soil, you may have to rotate your melons around there's a few things you can do though. You can fumigate the soil, which is pretty difficult for a lot of us. That's essentially just heating up the soil to a really high temperature and that will kill that disease in the soil. Or you could get yourself some rootstock and what, I, what you guys are looking at over here is a, a squash plant. I forget exactly what this one's called, but it's either kabocha squash or maybe a spaghetti squash. Some of these are very resistant to Fusarium wilt. So you can grow those out and then graft onto them the melon varieties that you want and they will be Fusarium wilt resistant, at least in the soil, at the soil level. But Fusarium wilt can also happen and spread just in the air. So it's really difficult to contain this thing and another big way this thing spreads so you want to keep them dry, you want to keep the soil hopefully free of the disease, but another big thing is actually this little beetle right here. And if I zoom in for you guys, we can maybe see it. He's hiding right now, but this is the cucumber beetle. And the, oh, there he is. And you can see his little stripes on him. He loves the cucumbers, he loves the melons, and what he does is he comes in here to the leaves and he gets holes in the leaves. They start eating the leaves, you can see there's holes in the flowers. So it's very difficult to not only deal with the humidity here, <laughs> but also to deal with this pest. So a few things, if you have the pest, what happens is the pest will attack the leaves, bite in the leaves, but then they're carrying the pathogen, the Fusarium wilt from one plant to the other. So if I have, for whatever reason how it happened, if I have one plant that is affected by Fusarium wilt, let's say my cucumbers, because they got affected would seem like first, I think they're much easier to get affected. What, what's gonna happen is they're gonna bite into those leaves and then they're gonna go to the next plant, bite into those leaves, and they're gonna carry the disease from one plant to the next. And if you don't control it at that point, you don't control the beetle, you don't start taking off these leaves. This is kind of what Fusarium wilt looks like, even though I've stepped on it a number of times here. We're gonna dispose of these, by the way, when I'm done this video is that the leaf really starts to wilt. And you can maybe even see it on this leaf here. This might be it's part of this leaf. See how that's wilting right here? This is definitely an infected leaf. So what I like to do is come in here and just take this off. And then this is what you know I will dispose of. Now, that's gonna help obviously stop the spread, but what we need to do to prevent the beetle is to get ourselves our sprayer get ourselves with some surround, which is a kaolin or an organic kaolin clay, and get ourselves this stuff on all the leaves so that when this beetle comes in here and starts biting on these leaves, they're not gonna wanna do it. So that's something I had to do really quickly here is come in here with the, with the spray and cover all these new leaves with the kaolin clay. I do not wanna have any more, any more um, Fusarium wilt spread as much as I can help it because right now we're in early to mid July and this is the time of the year when we should start to really get our melons to set fruit. 
And a lot of them across the board do not have melons on them just yet. It's a bit of a disappointment. We do have some down in here on this plant that are doing quite well. In fact, I think there was a number of them on this plant, but maybe this one has fallen off or didn't get pollinated. Oh, here it is right back in here. So this variety is doing quite well. I'm excited for that, but we may have to come in here anyway, and it's a good practice to come in here and hand pollinate these. So it's really that simple is that I think really getting good quality melons here in this climate and for most of us is to get them in a situation that we can avoid fusarium wilt, get the melons to set at the right time of the year, and then hopefully by the end of the year when it's a bit more rainy, maybe there's even more fusarium wilt than there is now, uh, we can definitely secure ourselves some melons before that craziness happens. So we'll see how this all works out. You know, wish me luck here, guys. Some other things I want to mention before I let you guys go is that uh, a local farmer mentioned to me that in order to protect them at younger ages is get yourself some row cover. Cover them with insect netting. That's going to prevent those beetles at a younger age from getting to these plants. So I think transplanting them out at the right time, having the right size transplants, and then covering them with insect netting. Then once they get to a nice size, the ground starts to warm up a bit more. We train them up these poles. Also, I think it's worth noting that I have been putting down some diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth contains a lot of silica and silica in the soil can help with these plants have a natural, have a better natural disease resistance. So. I think silica could potentially help if you guys have rice holes, you guys have some kind of silica supplement like Dynagro Protect. All this could potentially help. And just getting them up, I think, as single stem plants is going to, of course, save you a lot of room, probably make you have a lot more melon plants per area, per square foot. Um, so I guess the only thing left to show you now at this point is kind of just to, sh you know, how do I train these guys as single stem plants? Well, at every single node, there's going to be a leaf, there's going to be a new branch, there's gonna be some flowers which are forming now, and there'll be a tendril. And the tendril here is actually fallen off, it's gone. Maybe if I come back up here, I can show you something better. So here's the tendril, here's the new leaf, or the new branch, I should say, the new stem. Here's the flower. And here's the leaf. So what I need to do is come in here with this new branch and take that off, that new stem. And that will keep these plants as a single stem plant. And I think you gotta come in here quite often now that the ground has warmed up. If you're using tools to do this, um, I recommend that, but you need to make sure you're sanitizing your tools because then you're, if you're not doing that, you're essentially doing the same thing that the cucumber beetle's doing you're spreading that disease. So um, for the most part, I've been doing this with my hands and uh, it's worked out pretty well, but yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, I think, guys, growing melons 101. Hopefully we can get these things to set very soon. Otherwise, I may not be getting any melons from some of these plants, so we'll see. Wish me guys luck. The sun's starting to come out now, so I think these guys may be quite a bit better here with this extra heat and I'll catch you all soon. See you for tomorrow's video, everybody. And we'll talk to you all soon.